Hi, this is SynthChaser from SynthChaser.com and it's Micro Moog Mayhem here today as I've got three Moog Micro Moogs to repair. They have various issues. Uh, two of them are, are playing. One of them, one of those two has, has more issues than the other and one of them is completely dead. So I figured this would be a good opportunity to grab the camera and show you the guts of the Micro Moog and show you as I make some repairs to them. I've already done some power rewiring. One of them had this very short, very short power cord with this uh, sus looking um, plug on the end. See the ground wire there is disconnected. I, I, I don't really care for these, these open, open power plugs. Uh, so I, I replaced the power cord on that one already with a nice new three prong cord. The other one has the same kind of deal. This one had a uh, sufficiently long power cord, but the uh, ground plug had been pulled off. And this was actually on the outside of the synthesizer. So you see this, the cord had been cut and, uh, and soldered here. No heat shrink or anything like that. So that, that immediately had to go um, for, for obvious safety reasons. So here's the non-working one. The power light comes on if I wiggle the uh, cover just right. Uh, but I have the VCA in bypass mode so the, uh, there should always be audio output. I've got noise turned up. I've got the oscillator on, the filter open, and I'm not hearing anything coming out. Uh, I did check the power supply when I changed the power cord and the power supply was working properly with the correct voltages even with the load attached there were no short circuits dragging the voltage down so let's open this up and have a look so this is what the micro moog looks like with its hood popped and it's pretty simple inside there's one circuit board with all the pots and, and analog circuitry there's a power supply in the back here key bed modulation assembly and uh, under this cover is the power switch, fuses, and voltage selector. I'll show you real quick how I check the power supply voltages. So power supply is here. This brings in AC current from the, the transformer here. And this carries off our regulated DC voltages to the rest of the synthesizer. And you can see there that the, uh, the rails are labeled. So uh, like three of the pins are for... Uh, minus 15 volts, the gray wires. The green wires are for ground and the purple wires are for plus 15 volts. And first I took this measurement with this uh, cable disconnected. Um, I didn't want to power it on in an unknown state and potentially damage circuitry in the synthesizer if the power supply was faulty. But once I did this with the uh, cable disconnected, I did it again with it connected and I'll, I'll show you that. So measuring DC volts I put my black probe on ground, my red probe on the uh, plus 15 volts, and I'm getting 14.93, which is fine. And uh, now I move the red lead over to the uh, gray wire, the, the minus 15 volts, and I get negative 14.96 volts. So that's fine. Um, there's proper power going to the synthesizer. There's no short circuits on the board that are dragging the rails down. Um, so our issue is not a power one. So I've got this set up now into service position so I can look at the circuit board and the various components that are on it. I can get to it to change things if I need to. Uh, ideally this would be up on its side but the owner had mounted a, a little knob here so he could use a shoulder strap with it so now it won't stand up on its side but that's not the, not the end of the world. Uh, everything is connected except for this connector here, and this is the audio output. So I can just clip my scope onto this, this pin here if I want to see what the audio would look like. Or if I wanted to, I could build an extender um, to carry that, that audio to the jack, and then I can listen to it with my amp. I'll vacuum off some of the dust bunnies before I start troubleshooting. So doing a visual inspection of this board, uh, one thing that I noticed... Uh, that's kind of unfortunate. This seemed a little loose, and this is the uh, octave selection switch. So that's not good news. So since we have no audio output when the synthesizer is in bypass mode, the oscillator's on, the noise source, this this pot here, I've turned up. 
Um, obviously the uh, so if we don't hear an oscillator we don't hear the noise source uh, a good place to start looking would be at the VCA so the VCA is uh, located here it's this chip IC601 and we'll look at the input to the VCA which is on pin 2 and we should have a uh, 40 millivolt peak to peak signal here and we have nothing so our uh, noise source and oscillator if if they're working are not making it here to the uh, VCA so since our signals not making it to the VCA let's see if it's making it to the VCF so the VCF output goes to the VCA so now we should look at the input to the VCF and the input to the VCF uh, comes in at the bottom of the Moog ladder filter. For those of you who remember my video on the Mini Moog, uh, I showed you the ladder filter in the Mini Moog, and it consisted of 10 discrete transistors, um, two rows of, of five each. And uh, this ladder filter in the Micro Moog is the same filter, but it's built a little differently. Instead of using 10 individual transistors, they're using six individual transistors, and then they get better matching on the top and bottom rungs of the ladder. They're using this uh, 3046 transistor array here. So our top and bottom rung are on this chip, and our, our middle rungs of the ladder are discrete transistors. So if we're going to be looking for the signal coming into the ladder filter, we're going to have to look on this chip. And according to the schematic, the input would be on pin and we'd expect a 40 millivolt peak to peak signal. And it looks like we have a bit of a DC offset. So let's change our scopes coupling to AC. Now we can, uh, we can look at that. And it looks like we have a, uh, let's turn the noise down. If I turn the noise down, and there's our oscillator square wave. You can turn the octave selector switch. And it changes the frequency of that. I'll put the noise back in. And uh, yeah, there's our oscillator. It's about 50 millivolts peak to peak. It's a little louder, louder with the, uh, the noise added in. Uh, and then the DC offset there is, we've got a DC offset of about 1.5 volts. Looking at the schematic here, we should have a 40 millivolt peak to peak input signal with a 1.5 volt DC offset. So our filter input is, is good. So the output of the ladder filter should be on pin 10 of the transistor array chip, so 8, 9, 10, and uh, there's no output from the filter. So there's a couple options of uh, possibilities of things that could be wrong here. The uh, transistors in the ladder filter could be bad, or we could be driving the uh, ladder filter with the wrong control voltage or current. Um, so let's check the filter control voltage before we assume there's any, any problem with any of the parts in the ladder filter. So I'm going to probe the control voltage input to the ladder filter, which is pin 3 of that transistor array. And now I'm going to sweep the cutoff frequency pot. You can see that the, uh, the pot is not changing the control voltage input that's received at the filter. So I think we need to take a look at the uh, filter control voltage summing. So I can probe the wiper of the cutoff frequency slide, uh, pot here. So here's the filter open, and now I'm closing the cutoff frequency. And uh, the pot is working, but the, uh, uh, this is just one of several control voltage sources. There's trimmers, there's, there's modulation. Um, and those are summed up before they're passed on to the ladder filter. So I'm going to see what the deal is here, why, why changing this 
control does not affect the sum of the controls. The wiper of this pot is connected to this custom resistor array here. Uh, we know these to uh, the CTS resistor arrays to have a pretty high failure rate from uh, our Pomni. They're very easily damaged. Uh, this is a custom one. It's got precise uh, resistance values, different different ones going to each of the pins, uh, non-standard, you know, 1% one, 1 tolerance type, type thing. So let's check that out and make sure this resistor array is okay. So I took a few in-circuit measurements of the resistor network, and it seemed to be okay. Uh, I could see the value of that um, cutoff frequency uh, changing as I, as I tweak that pot. So the most likely suspect then was this op amp here, IC302, which sums the filter control voltages. So I pulled that op amp out and I tested it here in the uh, synth chaser op amp tester. And it's a dual op amp, uh, 1458, which, uh, you know, these are these old ones uh, fail a lot. And we can see here that um, the, uh, the 2A light is solid and the 2B light is flashing quickly. So that means that the uh, one half of this op amp, the, the, the uh, A half of this op amp is, uh, is stuck high. So the op amp is bad, so we'll need to replace that and see if that fixes our, our uh, filter control voltage. And since we are classy repair people, we put a IC socket here and a new chip. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that control voltage node there, the pin uh, 3 on the ladder filter uh, transistor array. So let me turn the cutoff frequency knob and we can see See there, the uh, control voltage is moving, uh, whereas previously it wasn't. So let's go ahead and take a look now at the pin for the audio output so that the shielded cable here is the black wire. Black wire goes to this pin here on the connector. Um, there we go. So there I'm turning the cutoff frequency. And there's our original signal. So if I put this board back in, I would expect to get audio output now. So let's do that. I want to keep this board out in case there's more problems with it. So what I did is I just took a, uh, a jumper wire and I connected this audio output connector to the high output jack. And I'll turn the volume up. I turned the noise down, but I'll turn the noise back up. There's the noise. But, uh... Obviously key contacts are very dirty and the bushings are shot, but we are, uh, we are getting output and uh, the synthesizer is behaving a lot better than it was. So now I need to go through and test all the functionality, see if there's any other issues with this one um, before I clean up the key bed, clean the pots, and calibrate it. So I pull the key bed out and I've removed the keys. And uh, we can see that the, uh, the little key stops are not at all level there. And uh, we were missing a couple bushings. And the bushings that we do have, they are just rock solid. And uh, you can hear them as I drop it down there. But it's just very brittle and cracking and rock hard so the bushings need to be replaced and then underneath we have the uh, the J wires and the bus bar this uses one bus bar you can see we're missing a J wire for one of our keys and uh, the, the the wire and the bus bar look pretty oxidized there so and then some of the and the J wires were a little bit bent up. So we're going to go through and we're going to clean the J wires and the bus, bus bar. Uh, we're going to put new bushings on, level the key stops, uh, put everything back and, and get it all adjusted 
nicely. So I mentioned there's only one bus bar, and that's actually kind of interesting on this synthesizer. Like on the ARP Odyssey, you'd see two bus bars, one, um, one for the control voltage, like we see here, there's, there's resistors between each of these J wires. So when you press a key, it knows the control voltage of the uh, lowest key that's, that's pressed. Uh, but this is kind of interesting because it also injects a like a 25 kilohertz triangle wave, and uh, by detecting that, uh, it can uh, it can extract the gate and trigger information without the need for a separate bus bar. So I finished with the key bed and I calibrated the synthesizer, put the circuit board back in, closed it all up, and then a new problem presented itself that that wasn't there before. And uh, that's this. So I have uh, the modulation routing turned off right now. I have the mod wheel all the way down and I have it set to square wave, although it doesn't matter which modulation source I have it on. This will do the same thing, but I'm going to turn this over to oscillator. And you see there I'm getting... I'm getting modulation even though the mod wheel is all the way down and that, that shouldn't be happening. So I gotta open it back up and uh, and check it out. So hopefully hopefully you'll be able to see this. So I'm gonna zoom in here and this is the modulation uh, the modulation wheel circuit board. You can see the top, second and third and the bottom two. Uh, solder joints on that header there appear to be cracked. So I'm just going to go ahead and reflow all of these uh, before I dive into troubleshooting. Hey, and check it out. That was that was actually the problem. <laughs> Visually inspecting things, you can find things sometimes faster than troubleshooting with a scope. Micro Moog Mayhem will continue in our next video as we service and repair the remaining two Micro Moogs. I hope you'll join me for that. This has been Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.